What we're going to look at now is commas. Commas are a very important part of the English language. Even though they're very small, they give important signals to the reader. They show the reader what's going on with your sentence and help the reader to figure out what it is you really mean. Now, you may have in the past been told that a comma represents a pause. And yes, it is true that typically when you encounter a comma while you're reading, you are going to pause, but you don't want to put a comma every single place you take a breath because there are certain grammatical rules that say what a comma means in particular situations. Now, what happens is I'll often get a paper where I can tell that the writer was really, really fond of commas. And there are commas just everywhere, kind of at random. Uh, the best analogy I've heard is it's like the student took a shotgun, loaded it up with commas, pointed it at the paper, and went blam. And all of a sudden, there are commas all over the place. So what we need to do when we are looking at commas is we need to look at both where they do go And we also want to look at where they don't go. So if you're looking at a sentence and you're tempted to put a comma in, what you want to do is figure out, is there a specific rule that says a comma should be there? And if there is not a specific rule that you can think of, then probably you don't want a comma there. So that's the thing to look for. If you're tempted to use a comma, the reader has taken a breath, that's not a good enough reason by itself. See if you have a comma rule that applies. Now, one situation where you put a comma, and this may be something familiar if you've already looked at how to deal with run-on sentences, you use a comma with the fanboys, which is to say the coordinating conjunctions for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. When you are connecting complete sentences, and this is an important distinction. When you have two complete sentences that you're connecting, you want to remember the fanboys by themselves are not strong enough to make that connection. Uh, likewise, a comma by itself is not strong enough to make that connection. So you do need to have both the fanboys and the comma if you're connecting complete sentences. On the other hand, if you're not complete sentences, So, if you don't have complete sentences, then the fanboys by themselves are strong enough to hold those together. They're not complete sentences. And one thing that a lot of people uh, see, they've used fanboys, or they've used the comma with the fanboys so often, they seem to think, every time I have a fanboy, I should have a comma. And that's not true. Uh, it's only true if there's complete sentences on both sides. So go and look at what you have. If you do have complete sentences, Yes, you use a comma. If it's not complete sentences, then you probably don't need a comma unless there's some other comma rule. But usually, you're not going to need a comma in that situation. And by the way, I've got another video in which I'm uh, setting forth examples of these usages. Uh, and so if you wish, what you might want to do is keep both these windows open uh, in separate windows, both these videos, so that you can switch back and forth, so you can look at the examples that illustrate these different rules. Now, another place that you do use a comma is if you have a series with three or more elements. So if you have some kind of a list, you're going to use commas to separate the elements in that list. Uh, one way to think of it is 
the comma replaces the word and in your list of items. And so that's another place where you use commas, and that is even if you have not complete sentences, if it's a list with three or more things, then you do want to have commas. Another place you're going to use commas is to set off an introductory element. If you start the sentence with some kind of an introductory thing, which could be a single word, a single adverb, for example, or it could be something like a prepositional phrase or a dependent clause or any of those sorts of things, the comma is useful because it shows the reader you're done with the introductory element and you're getting to the main sentence. This is especially important if you have a really long, complicated introductory element. Because what you have to do then is you have that little comma there and that lets the reader know, hey, I'm done with this introductory element. Now, here we are at the main sentence. So that's a really important item a signal to the reader to let the reader know, hey, now we're getting to the main thing. Now, if you have a really short introductory element, like a single adverb, sometimes you can get away with leaving that comma off. But as I said, if you've got a complicated introductory element, you need to show the reader where that introductory element ends and the main sentence begins. Somewhat related to that is if you have extra information in your sentence. So if you have some information in your sentence uh, that's just extra information about what's just gone before, um, you put commas around it. And the way you can tell that it's extra information is if you can remove it, if it, if it can be removed, without changing the meaning of the sentence. And so uh, when you have extra information, that's your test. If you take that information out of the sentence, if the sentence still means the same, if that stuff was just extra additional information, then you can put commas around it because it's extra stuff. And by the way, if you have your extra information in the middle of a sentence, you want to be sure to have commas both before and after it. Uh, kind of like for the introductory element, uh, the comma at the end of the extra information lets the reader know, OK, we're back to the main body of the sentence. On the other hand, you do not want to use the commas if you have essential information. That is to say, if you have information and it can't be removed, without changing the meaning. So again, what you'll do is you'll test it. Take that information out and see if the sentence still means the same thing. If you take that information out and the sentence does not still mean the same thing, that means it's essential information. You don't want to put commas around it. And in fact, I have an example of a, uh, where I hand to my students usually, uh, where you can get into really, really big trouble by sticking commas where they don't belong because it does change the meaning of your sentence. And the example I give uh, was a situation in which there was a corporate lawyer writing a contract, uh, put a comma in where a comma shouldn't have been, changed essential information into extra information, changed the meaning of the contract, and allowed the other company to get out of the contract and ended up costing the lawyer's employers $2.13 million. So you want to be careful when you're using commas. If you have a essential information, absolutely make sure not to put commas in to separate it, because then you really can mess up the meaning of what you're trying to say. Another situation where you use commas, and this is kind of esoteric, 
is if you have a series of adjectives, so a whole bunch of words describing a noun, um, if they have equal value, which is to say you can change the order and still make sense. So if you have a bunch of adjectives and it doesn't matter what order they come in, the sentence means the same, then you put commas between them. However, if you have adjectives of unequal value, which is to say, if you change the order of them, it kind of doesn't make sense or it really sounds weird. Then you leave the commas out. And this is kind of a common theme. If you can change things and it still makes sense, you have commas. If you can't change things and still make sense, you don't have commas. Things that are fixed like that, uh, you don't put commas. Other places that you don't put commas, you don't put commas between the subject and verb of your sentence. The subject and the verb of the sentence are much too tightly connected to each other. So they're not going to have a comma between them uh, unless you have one of these other rules that says you need a comma. But if you don't have any of these other rules, you won't have a comma between the subject and verb of the sentence. They're too tightly related. You also won't have a comma between the verb and the object. Because once again, we're looking at something where um, they're too tightly related. They're too, uh, too close to each other. So you don't have a comma between those either. Also, you don't have a comma after certain things. You don't have a comma after the fanboys. If you are making complete sentences, then yes, you do have a comma before the fanboys, but you almost never have a comma after the fanboys. You also won't have a comma after dependent words. So you won't have a comma after things like although, or but, or while. Um, you also won't have commas after prepositions, uh, which includes phrases such as such as. Uh, a lot of people seem to think if you have, say, a list of things, and before that list you have an introductory word such as, such as, or like, or including, no comma after any of those. Now some people say, well, there's a list. Don't I need something there? And the answer is no. A lot of people are tempted to put a colon there. No, you don't put a colon in front of a list unless there's a complete sentence in front of the colon. So most of the time, if you've got something like such as or including, those will not have any punctuation after them. So remember that. Um, so those are some rules for where you do and don't use commas. As I said, I have another video that gives examples of these situations. And you will want to look at that video to see exactly how these rules work. The main thing to remember, though, is if you're tempted to use a comma, especially if you know you're fond of commas, if you want to use a comma, look at the list of rules. Do you see a rule that says you need a comma there? If you don't see one of these rules, then you probably don't use a comma.